In fact, uh, the rates of smoking initiation are at their lowest rates than they have been for a couple decades. But with that said, we still have more than 3,000 children who smoke their first drag of cigarette smoke every day. We know that 50% of lifetime smokers start before the age of 16. So there are lots of policies in particular, taxes, clean indoor air ordinances, and laws that ban the sale of cigarettes to minors that can help protect our children. Because most of them become addicted as children, thus we have to concentrate on working with the adults to help them to break free of this tobacco dependence. Yeah, I'm thinking this could be a great opportunity for respiratory therapists to go out into high, uh, uh, to high schools and show them you know, some of the things we do to treat lung disease, but also the damage of smoking. Oh, well, the, the, it, it's really important that young people see that. And what we find is that they're, they're impacted by some of the chronic damages, but they're also impacted by some of the more acute effects of smoking, that smoking um, makes you smell bad, that nobody would want to kiss, yeah. kiss an ashtray, those, those immediate effects. But the role of respiratory therapists in this regard, I think, is an enormous opportunity because respiratory therapists, more than most other clinicians on a day-to-day -day basis, see the devastating health outcomes of smoking. How could we help ensure that counseling and medication are delivered to every patient, every visit? Well, Sam, it's really important, and it relates to the importance of systems-level changes. How do we change, in essence, the architecture of a healthcare visit so that we more systematically identify and intervene with smoking? And there are actually five system-level changes that we can implement. The first is to have a tobacco user identification system so that every patient who walks through your door along with the regular vital sign check is also asked if they use tobacco or not. Second, to educate the staff because we need to have staff knowledgeable about the key interventions and that relates not just to the respiratory therapist and the physician but the nurses, the medical assistants, the whole healthcare delivery team. Third, we need to have a champion and this is a wonderful role for respiratory therapists who deal so much with the impact of smoking to continuously remind the clinic and the administration of the importance of addressing tobacco dependence. Fourth, we have to have hospital policies uh, such as the Joint Commission ones we'll talk about in a few moments mm -hmm. that identify and intervene with smokers. And finally, we need to pay clinicians for delivering these services and expand insurance coverage to make certain that these treatments are covered. And the good news is the Affordable Care Act includes coverage for counseling and medications to help people quit as part of the broader prevention coverage mandate. Well, Michael, you know, as RTs, we, <clears throat> we shouldn't have to wait to be told to do these things. We should take the initiative. Don't you think we should be more proactive? Oh, I think than all we clinicians, are? respiratory therapists, physicians, nurses, uh, the whole healthcare delivery team, but respiratory therapists, because they're in the front lines of smoking caused disease, I think have a particular role. Um, the good news is that we could help our patients one on one, but we could also help in terms of changing our communities, our states, and our nation in terms of policies.